Welcome to this rapid revision video on the Battle of the Little Big Horn. Firstly, a bit of background. This is only going to be a brief video. There are loads of videos out on YouTube which show this battle in tremendous detail. And if you really want to know the movements of what happened on the day, I'd suggest you watch one of those. However, if you're revising for a GCSE exam or just want a basic overview of what happened and the outcomes of that event, this video should be perfect. This was a battle between the US 7th Cavalry under George Armstrong Custer, and it was not only famous, but it was a turning point in how the Indians were treated. Before, broadly speaking, Indians were partly tolerated, but gradually moved onto reservations. I do say partly tolerated because remember there were still horrendous events like the Sand Creek Massacre. However, after the Battle of the Little Big Horn, Indians were given a simple choice. Either become like other US citizens, assimilate, or die whether by starvation or under the guns of the US Army. A bit of background to the battle then. Why did it occur? In the 1868 Second Fort Laramie Treaty, the Black Hills had been guaranteed to the Sioux. A picture of the Black Hills is shown below. It had been guaranteed that this would be left to the Sioux as a sacred site in perpetuity, which means forever. However, in 1874, all of that changed. Men building the Northern Pacific Railroad, protected by Custer's 7th Cavalry, discovered gold. Thousands of gold prospectors flooded into the Black Hills, leaving the Fort Laramie Treaty in tatters. The Sioux rejected US government offers to buy the Black Hills for $6 million and instead began raiding the prospectors. The Sioux gathered around the chief sitting bull and crazy horse, who, remember, had refused to sign the 1868 treaty. But President Grant insisted that from December 1875, any Sioux that had not gone back to the reservations would be attacked by the US Army, presuming them to be hostile. Heavy snow made this impossible, as in it made it impossible for the Indians to return to their reservations. But in any case, Sitting Bull said, the whites want a war and we will give it to them. He had 2,000 warriors and 5,000 other Indians with him. In June 1876, they met the US Army at the Battle of Little Big Horn. Firstly, you might be wondering why it's called the Little Big Horn. Well, the Little Big Horn is actually a river. It's a tributary of the much larger Big Horn River, so hence Little Big Horn. When I was learning about this for the first time, I always thought that was a slightly strange name, so I thought I'd just cover that, and you can see it in the map below. So what happened on that day? The Battle of the Little Big Horn on June the 25th, 1876, was a shambles for the US Army. Custer and all of his men under his command were slaughtered by their own overconfidence, Custer's arrogance and the bravery of the Sioux. Custer's men were slaughtered because Custer's 600 men were outnumbered by 2,000 Indians. Custer had split his force into three in a doomed attempt to surround the Sioux. I should point out here that not everyone in the 7th Cavalry was, was completely wiped out. It's those that were under Custer's command that were wiped out. On the map, you can see them in the top left there. Custer had left behind powerful Gatling guns. These are like early machine guns where you crank uh, a handle to spin the barrels and fire the gun. He had left behind powerful Gatling guns and did not wait for reinforcements. Sitting Bull led the women and children to safety. And Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull led the Indians well, with Crazy Horse leading the attack on Custer's men. I should point out here that Sitting Bull was actually not in a position to take part in the fighting here. He had taken part in a sun dance some time before, and the pain and the injuries that this inflicted on him, while a useful boost to the morale of the Indians, also meant that he was not in a position to fight. That's why he led the women and children away. Also, Custer's men were surrounded by the Sioux. They were all killed in a so-called last stand to defend themselves. But it wasn't necessarily going to be good news for the Indians. Because when we look at what happened next, we'll see that the consequences were pretty severe. Up until the battle, most people agreed that the US government should try to reach agreements with the Indians and maintain peace. But all of that was about to change. The first outcome is that the US government decided that the Plains Indians must stay on reservations, something that President Grant had already outlined. The US Army relentlessly chased Indians back onto reservations, and within five years, virtually all Indians were on reservations. They were now totally reliant on the US government for food and shelter. Our second outcome is that previous treaties could now be basically ignored at will by the US government. The US government had never been good at honouring agreements with the Indians, but now they had public support to openly ignore them. They withheld food until the Indians did what the government wanted. And thirdly, the army would maintain control of the Indians. The US Army increased the number of soldiers guarding the Indians. 
all Indian warriors had to surrender and give in their weapons. And in 1877, during one such surrender, Crazy Horse surrendered. He was murdered whilst under arrest. What are our final points then? The Battle of the Little Big Horn was instigated by Custer and led to his crushing defeat and death. In the longer term, the effects on the Indians were devastating. President Grant's peace policy was a distant memory by this point. That's kind of summed up by this genuine source. It's taken from a US newspaper of the time. I don't like the language in it, but I've included it because I feel it really sums up just how severe attitudes had grown towards the Indians in the wake of the Battle of the Little Big Horn. And the newspaper article said, it is time to quit this Sunday school policy and let Sheridan, uh, who was the commander in chief of the army in the West, exterminate every Indian who will not remain off on the reservations. The best use to make of an Indian who will not stay in a reservation is to kill him. It is time that the dawdling, which means slow and aimless, maudlin, which means a sort of foolishly sentimental peace policy was abandoned. Very harsh words indeed, and things were only going to get worse for the Plains Indians. And in a future video, we'll look at how the Plains Indians' way of life was ultimately destroyed. That's the end of this rapid revision video. I hope it's been useful to you. And if it has, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. If you've got a comment to make, especially in terms of whether you've got uh, another topic that you're desperate for me to do a rapid revision video on, then please pop it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. But for now, that's the end of this video. I'll say thank you very much for watching and tune in for more at another time. Goodbye.